I'm back from yesterday and I want to finish up what I called a pair of earrings but now is two pendant necklaces because I want to show you that the process of creating has a lot of failures within it. It's not all easy and not everything turns out as simple as my videos that are highly edited like many other artists and we have our ups and our downs and our failures and sometimes I think it's more important for you to see the process and the failing and how everybody learns differently. And so when you do things and they don't turn out like mine, it's okay. They're yours and they should look like you and not like mine because that's what makes our pieces special. So let's get started and grab a cup of tea and join me while we go and finish up our pendants. Now to return back, we have our two pendants and here is what I was trying to create. And I know exactly what I did wrong now, so I would tell this in the video if I were showing how to do this, is the biggest thing I did wrong was I didn't measure the height of the pods when I started. So that is why visually they were completely different because had I measured these, they w I would have had the same size piece like I do here. And that would have changed everything completely. But, you know, we all make our mistakes and we all learn from our mistakes and I'll still have two beautiful necklaces and a pair of earrings, so it's okay. But since I was up late last night, I decided to create another pair of earrings just to make sure I got this whole concept right. You see, for you guys, for me to do a video, I usually do it at least four or five times before you see it in the video. And if it doesn't work out, you don't see it. So here was another pair that I had created, once again measuring so that I knew I had it right. And these I just put a little extra little curly cues in between the flowers just to give a different look. And I switched up the colors on my leaves. When I show you how to do the graduated colors, this is where it really pays off because it gives you that whole variation in one simple piece. And then I was thinking, well, what would it look like if you had two different pods? What if you don't have matching pods? How would that look? And I only had these two purple pods and the two blue pods, so I thought this would be kind of interesting together, and it was kind of an interesting look. It breaks it up and gives a completely different look just by changing the colors of the pods. I hope I gave you lots of ideas there. Now that it, you do know how to make the earrings, just measure the pods that they are the same height and you'll be fine. So let's move on to the pendants. Whoops. Now to start out and do my fringe, I prefer to lay my beads out. Some of these are a little bit bigger, so I like to put the bigger ones in the middle and the smaller ones on the side. Same thing with these. Every one of my beads is a little different because they're handmade. Now with the leaves, sometimes even though they're measured out, they're the exact same amount of clay. You'll have one that's a little longer, one that's a little squattier. I try to put those in a range also so that they're all evened out and that they would hang and look nicer. And I always start in the middle, which would be this row right here because that's the biggest or the longest bead of whatever I have. And I'm going to begin with two size 11 seed beads. For some reason, I always start with a size 11, usually the matching edge bead. I find that it kind of brings things down a little bit more similar. And we'll add two of these little bicones. And I'm going to add one of these rondelles, a glass pearl, and another rondelle. And let's see, let's see how long that is. Gives me an idea. Well, that's pretty long. Let's add this flower bead a rondelle and a pearl, and another rondelle, and then that other flower bead in the middle. Let's see how far that is. The first one really is your gauge to give you an idea of how long your fringe is going to be. And I think I wanna go a little bit longer, so let's do a rondelle, a pearl, and another rondelle. I like the way that looks in between here. Then I have this larger bicone, we'll put that on last. And just one of these seed beads that we started with, the size 11s. Now I have some size 15s. I like to use six of the 15s when I put on each side of my leaf. So I'm adding six seed beads, my leaf, and six more of the size 15 seed beads. Now let's see how that looks because I'm never committed. 
Actually, I kind of really like that. I think that looks really pretty. Now, since I've committed to this and I really like the way it looks, I'm just going to go back up through that size 11 and all of these beads to the top here and just follow that through. The first strand is always your test strand and you can decide, do I want them all long or do I want to graduate this and have it go a little bit shorter as I go up or do I want to listen to my snoring dog? It's amazing, she's so little and she snores so loud. I'm just going to continue up through these beads and then go back up through that original bead. It's easier if I turn it over to see. So you see that original bead we went through, which was just in the center, and I guess the center, because you really can't tell with a handmade bead exactly where the center mm -hmm. is, especially with an oval. So just guess it, and I prefer to go over one. So I skip a bead, I guess it's over two really. So I'm skipping a bead and going through the following bead next to it. And now I'm just repeating that process. Now I've come over two beads, so I'm coming out the second bead, and I'm noticing that when I put my bead on here, it's too wide, there's no room here, and when I get a bunch of fringe, it's going to make my beads turn sideways and you're not going to see the flowers. So it's better for me to move over one bead, and when I say move over one bead, see, I've skipped that first bead there, I'm in the second bead, I'm going to go back up and go through another bead over, so I'll skip two beads and go into the third bead. And this first time through, you really kind of have to gauge how much room you have. Because if you don't have enough room, you're gonna be pulling this out or it will just never hang right. But be willing to take the time and make sure that there's enough space for all of your beads involved going down. And the easiest way to tell is just add them. And I'm just copying the order of beads I already have here. So whatever pattern you've created, just recreate that exact same pattern. It's just easier to go back, pull it all up, and make sure you have it all in the correct position. See, I don't. Before I added all those 15s, I'm missing that bottom crystal. It's so easy to make these mistakes, especially for me because I'm talking. I'm not paying attention as much to what I'm beating as the camera but it's easy to do that if you're watching TV and doing other things. We're going to add six of the 15s one more time and pulling from the same spot that I have the fringe in. So the fringe is over to the right here and I've obviously moved everything out of the way, but I wanna keep them in the order that they're supposed to be moving from the middle out. And now I'm going to add six more of my size 15 beads. From where I put my hole, six of them seems to be my magic number that they always hang nice and loose. The worst thing you want to do is have your beads all tight. These leaves will stick up and be kind of pointy and they won't lay nice. It's because you've pulled them too tight or you didn't have enough beads in there for them to lay nice and loose. So make sure when you're starting your fringe that you leave plenty of room for your beads to freely move around. And we'll go up through the back here. A lot of people ask me this, how come my fringe is pointy and it's all it's not nice and flowy like yours is? Don't pull this too tight. Keep it nice and loose. Even when I go back, I don't pull it too tight. I want there to be some give on this so that it hangs nice and loose and has a lot of movement to it. Now I'm going to go over, here's the middle one, to the other side so that I get that on three over. Remember, if this seems too sparse, you can always add a shorter fringe in between, but you need enough room for those wider beads. I'm skipping two here, I'm skipping two and going down the third. And I'm just going to copy this exact same pattern. If you notice, I have pink beads and I have clear beads, and you can't really tell too much of the difference because once again, I'm using the pink thread. Now we're just going to fill in all the blanks on our beads here. But now that I have a minute while I bead, I can chat. And I just wanna tell you guys, sometimes I feel really bad because I don't answer all the questions on the comments or I don't really get specific with things. Sometimes I just get overwhelmed with all the comments and I, I really appreciate all the nice comments people leave. I just sometimes feel overwhelmed with, should I be reading comments or should I be filming? <laughs> I don't really get that much time. I still have to clean my house 
do the dishes, cook for my husband, all those kind of things. So I don't have unlimited time to video and I have to pick and choose. So sometimes if I don't answer your comment or I just put a like next to it, please don't take it personally. I just can't get to it all. And now we have our three strands done. We're going to add one on each side. So I'm going to go over, skipping two, to the third bead right there. I hope no one thinks that I'm ignoring their comments. It's just a matter of, I'm one person, I do this as a hobby, and there's only so many comments I can answer, and I do appreciate the wonderful comments that a lot of you leave, and I just want you to know that, but I'm just not capable of producing videos and answering comments in detail. And there are a lot of comments that have already been answered by a lot of other people, and I really appreciate that because I just can't get to them all. Because I'd rather do videos than answer questions anyway. I think it helps more people. But if there's something that's a, a beading or a polymer clay question, I'll try and answer it in a video. I'll try and do my best. And we're just going back up on this last one. Once we get this other fringe in, you get a better idea of how many you want. And now that we've come up to the top, we're going to go over across to the other side. Now once again, we're going to skip two on this side and go over the third bead. And hopefully I have this even because I always guess it. There's really no other way to do it. You figure that this is your center, is where you have your flowers, and I just went down which bead was closer to the center because you can't really get it exact. It's just how the beads fall. And now we're just going to put our last fringe in and decide whether we want to put some shorter ones in between there also. Now one of my favorite things about beading is I can throw all these little beads in a little tray or a box, go outside in the yard and bead for a couple hours on the hammock. I can just go out and sit. I live across from a park, sit in the park and bead. I just like the fact that it's such a portable hobby. Or I can actually hang with my husband and sit and bead, but I almost never do that. I think my husband thinks that my beating time is my personal time, and he kind of leaves me alone. And I'm okay with that because we haven't been out of the house for 24 seven, so I think it's nice that we each have our own space. I think it makes it a better relationship having some space in between. Now that we're getting to the end of this, we can get a better idea of how we want to finish it off. Because the fringe really changes the whole way this pendant feels. And it gives you a better idea of how you want to finish off the top of it, whether you want it to be light and airy or more bulky. Yes, I think I could add some beads in here, just some short little tassels. And the way to do that, you would have to add it in between these beads. You can't go through the bead, you have to go in between them. Because if you go through one of these beads, then it's going to be too tight in here. Remember, we left two beads so there's not a big gap. And normally I go through a bead, so that's a lot easier, but you can go in between. And you can leave a little bit of a shorter thread because this does seem to have kind of a wide space between it, and then you've got these bulky beads. And I think if we did fill that in, it would make it look a lot more complete. And I'm just going to fill it in with the matching beads. Or you could do a different pattern. You could do, Let's say, we'll do the pearl. Let me get, I've got some rondelles over here. A rondelle in the middle. We'll do more pearls than rondelles, just because we can. We'll switch it up just enough that it's a little bit different, but not huge. See, now there we go. That's where the problem comes in. See, these beads hit each other, so you really can't put too much more, or it'll push these out, and it, these, once again, will go sideways rather than laying flat. So what I'm going to do is just put one of these 15s on the end and go back up through my pearl, and that's all I'm going to add, and go back up through these seed beads. You have to make sure that these aren't going to hang wonky, because that could be another problem also if they don't hang, if they hang up at different angles. So make sure you shake it and move it around and see how it's going to hang. I think this will be okay with the shorter one. But always check your fringe because the lighter fringe can sometimes not hang correctly. 
This has a lot of weight on it, so I know this one will hang nice and correct. But the shorter ones can be tricky little buggers. So I need to move over and remember to go in between those beads, which is so much harder. It's much easier to go through a bead. Gives you a perfect spot. But somehow things just end up where there's never a perfect spot, so you have to make it. And I like to grab underneath that thread that's in between the beads. And now we'll add those other collection of beads. And everything seems to get messed up here because I only have like a four by six space here so that I can keep the camera really nice and close so you can see. I don't have a whole lot of space to work in. It's sort of a double jeopardy of either I can be further away or close up. And I try to get as close as I possibly can, but it's very hard to keep the beads and what I'm working on straight. I seem to always be out of the camera if I have the beads off to the side too far. It's quite a challenge because if I move my hands up a half an inch, I'm out of the camera. And I'm always beating away from myself when I'm beating on camera. So I stress out after a while from beating. I don't enjoy doing it on camera for weeks on end because it sort of takes the creativity out of it when you're constantly demoing. So now we're just going back in between here and filling in all of these fringes. These glass pearls can be very inexpensive and if you're just starting out they give you a lot of bang for your buck plus you can pass through them numerous times so they're much easier to work with than natural freshwater pearls that have such tiny holes that sometimes I struggle threading the needle for the freshwater pearls. They're, it's a size 15 needle and the thread is almost bigger than the needle. So if you have trouble with small needles, do not buy freshwater pearls. You will hate them. The holes are just super duper tiny. And when you now you can get a better idea by adding that little fringe in between how we filled in, bulked it up and gave it a lot more feel of being a little beefier because it was kind of hollow through here and looked kind of blank where now it's got some substance. And I just want to take the edge here and run a little pico around this just to switch it up a little. I don't have the best shape on this. It's not perfect and the easiest way to fix that I find sometimes is to add a pico. A pico is just three beads. So I'm taking three of my size 11 beads. I'm going through the first open hole here and I'm going back through the next open hole. Let me show you on the back. It might be easier. So we're going through, coming out one, adding three beads, and going in the next hole. That's it. And you can do this to anything. You can add, just this little pico can make such a difference on many pieces. On the earrings that I created here, that's just a little pico edge that went around, and all it is is the three beads. So it looks like there's two rows of beads and one sticking out, and one snoring puppy. She has a collapsed trachea. She's had that since she was little and she's very old now. So that's why she snores so loudly. And she's a bit overweight because she steals the other puppy's food. I can't seem to keep her out of the cat dish or the other dogs. Somehow I, I seem to turn my back for one second and she's eating someone else's food besides her own. I have four dogs so it gets challenging. So all I'm doing is just going around this whole piece and I'll do this one more and then you can see. See the difference that makes? It just adds a whole nother row of beads and this is a little bit misshapen and it'll give the illusion that it's a little bit of a better shape. And it gives a nice frame around it. It just depends. Some pieces I find this to be a little too much for and other pieces I really like the way it adds a little a touch of detail. So it really depends on the piece you're creating, whether this is a plus or too much. Now I'm just gonna go around this whole piece and I am going to reinforce all of this fringe because that's what I like to do on my pieces is reinforce the fringe just in case this gets caught in something. So that's like watching paint dry. I'll do that and come back. I have all my beads finished around the pendant and I have everything reinforced so I don't have to worry about this ever pulling out. And I've got a new thread that I'm going to put in and I wanna show you how I put a thread in. Sometimes people don't know where to start. I've got a knot on the end of my thread here 
and I'm going to come out each side for my necklace. And so I'm just gonna go a little bit past those crystals there. I want to bury the knot underneath the crystals. So most people would have thought to put the knot in the back. No, I only put the knot in the back when I'm finishing up a piece and I have no other place that I can make the knot. But I always put my knot in the front and then I go back through. So I have a locking stitch. Let me give it one more time where I want to end up with this pendant. We'll go about there. Now to start this, I come out the back and I'll add like, we'll say five of these size 11s. And there are the matching ones so it'll blend in. And yes, that'll bring me up to about the spot where I can add a crystal or a size six seed bead or an, even an eight. Now I went and got a few beads so we can fill this in here. We've got our first seed beads at the end here that just go the length, which are five seed beads, just up past that pico. Because it's real important we pass that pico, we don't want to squish it down with a pile of beads. And now it's just a matter of making a pattern, whatever floats your boat. These are very interesting. These are clear crystals that have a color line in them. So it's a clear crystal with the color on the inside. So you just get that extra sparkle rather than a lot of the crystals have a color coating. This has a color inside. Just gives a different look. You'll find a lot of beads have a color inside too. I'm going to use these. I have a few of these pearls left. These glass pearls and I'm really feeling these flower beads that I made. And the beauty of making your own beads is not only do you save a lot of money because building a bead stash is quite pricey, but you can get the colors that you want. So if your favorite colors are pink, just make tons of pink beads. And pink beads are actually the hardest to find. Pink glass beads, um, pink pearls, they're all very, very hard to find, the glass pearls. Sometimes when I find them, I buy all of them that are there because they're just so hard to find. And this is when I really want to see how I'm going to do this. And I, I liked these beads before with this, but now I'm not feeling them. I feel like they're, they're just, they don't go. I like the flowers better with the flowers. So I'm just going to eliminate those beads out of my stash. Just like I'm, I'm limited to, this is all I have for the one side of pink pearls. I only have one strand of each of, I have a little bit more of these crystals I can use on this side because I only have two strands of the crystals. And this is a common occurrence where this is all you have and you have to figure it out. This is pretty much the basic beading dilemma that we all have. So sometimes it dictates how long your necklace will be or how many beads you'll be putting in because that's all you have. And I don't want this to be super long, so I think I'll be okay either way, but I like this double pattern here with the pearl in the middle. And you'll know what I mean when I put these on. Yes, that's what I mean, where I have two beads and then one bead and then two beads. I like the way that looks with this fringy type of a feel. And I could have used clear crystals, but I had these pink ones and they were talking to me. And sometimes that's just how this happens. They just talk to you and that's the beads you end up using. Now these flowers are just a flower cane that I have put translucent clay around and then basically just put them all over the beads. Now when I do use translucent cane on a bead, I make the center out of translucent clay. Otherwise sometimes you'll have the color bleed through and you might not be happy with that after you've baked it. So if you're going to spend that time, spend that time doing beads you know you'll be happy with. I don't mind using scrap clay on a bead that has a opaque cane, but when it has a translucent cane, you're kind of stuck that you've either got to use white, which sometimes that can come up uneven too. I found just stick with the translucent. It's the same price, you don't save anything. I drill my beads out after I bake them. I put a skewer hole in them, I glaze them, and then before I string them, I drill them out again. So there's a larger hole in them. I find that they have a tendency to distort when they're, they're kind of just unbaked. But when they're soft before they're baked, I 
do not put a large hole in them. I find that not to be a good time just because they, they drill so much nicer after they're baked. And I'm just going to add my clasp. Now, you can use a button. I like to use my, my flower marguerite beads. And when I say marguerite, a lot of people don't know what I mean. It's just got a hole in the middle here. And you could use any flower bead, any marguerite bead. I have different styles. And I'm going to add six of my size 11 seed beads. Go through it, and someplace under here I had three gold beads. Now you could do one bead, but I like the way three looks better, and the other thing is it reinforces it. And with a necklace, always better to be reinforced, better to be safe than sorry. Nothing worse than having your work fall apart. Especially when it just comes to going through a few more times, you're already there doing it. So we have six more seed beads that I'm adding to the other side here. So we're just going around one more time. So I'm going to add it right where I put those seed beads on and go back up the flower one more time. I like to reinforce my necklaces a lot. So now we're just going to go back down through and I will tighten this all up. Now, once again, do not pull this too tight. I see this so much where people have necklaces and bracelets and they're stiff. It should be floppy and loose and feel nice. When it's stiff, it feels terrible. You can t always tighten it up. So now I'm just going back through everything and reinforcing. And I don't want to make this video too long, so I'm going to cut this one a little bit short. Now I'm going to add my other five seed beads to the front here. Now I just go back and reinforce this. I will finish this up and come down through here because this is all I'm doing now is just reinforcing this. And it gets a little tight in here. It gets tight between these seed beads too. But I feel when you know it's getting tight, you know you've got it really nice and reinforced. So now we're just going back through here. And I'll start to knot. I'll just do a half hitch knot as I go back. And you probably say, well, a half hitch doesn't do much. It actually does a lot more than you think. If you've ever had to cut a piece apart that you've put a lot of half hitch knots in, you literally have to cut every bead out. Now I'm on the other side and I'm over three crystals here. Sometimes you gotta find a point of where are you over and then I'm coming over three crystals on the other side. It's just the easiest way to figure that out. And I'm going to add my five size 11 seed beads here. And then I'm just going to do the exact same pattern on this other side till I get to the end here. Pretty much real easy. This is the best part where you don't have to think. You can kind of just relax and do the monotonous work. And I think that's what I like about beading and polymer clay the most is it's a lot of repetition and it can be monotonous and boring for some people. For me, I just find it relaxing because it's like creating without thinking. Once you start to get to this point, it just starts to come together and you don't really have to do much except follow the pattern that you've already created. This is where I get really funny and I make sure that I put, I line these up side by side because I am famous for not making the same pattern twice, especially if I'm talking. So this is where I call it a design element and not a mistake. So if you made a mistake doing this side because you were talking, watching TV, doing something else, make the same mistake on the opposite side. It then becomes a design element and not really a mistake. It's only a mistake if you did it on one side and not the other. So don't beat yourself up. Just repeat the mistake on the opposite side and that will get you out of that now just a little trick, whenever I'm kind of tight on beads, I always cut them in half. Just separate them in half and know that that's all I have for one side. So if I don't have enough, I know that I've got to add other beads for the length that I need. Because once you've committed them, you can't add, they just don't show up. And something like these beads, if I didn't use the cane, the original cane, they never match. I don't even bother to try to make beads that match. I used to keep a pattern book and a color mixing book, and it didn't seem to matter. I don't know if any of you have found this, but sometimes 
your azurillian crimson is a different shade next time you get it or even my whites there have been several shades of white clay so even if you measured your clay out mix it exactly it doesn't come out to match how much white moved over how much crimson moved over it, it just never happens so it's just best to use your beads up in the same sitting and you don't have to worry about that okay so now we're finished here and we just have to do the loop for our flower but many people don't understand why can't you make just the same bead over I can make the same bead twice it just won't be the same shades and once you've started a necklace unless you have the two shades mixed together it's just like two different dye lots of fabric if you did half a couch in one dye lot and the other half in another dye lot it wouldn't blend you need to have all one dye lot or decide that you want to make a patchwork of some colors or something now I have no idea how many beads I've put on here because you've just watched me talk while I've done it and I cannot count and talk so I'm just going to guess and see if it fits over that flower now unlike a bracelet a necklace can be a little bit looser because it has the front to pull it down so it doesn't have to be super tight it can be a little bit looser like that so you'll always have that weight from the front that gives you that pull but I don't like it to be too loose because it's well actually that's not very loose you can see that it's fitting quite snugly so that will work just perfectly and that's called dumb luck now I'm going back down through here I will add my beads at the end here go around and come back up now to finish off the end here i am add some size 15s and I'm adding let me go through the first one of my 11s and I'll just add an 11 a 15 and an 11 so that I make a larger pico and it'll be that 11 15 and an 11 all the way around skipping a bead going through a bead the more I do it the better you can see Now I've gone through and just connected all of my little 15s with three size 15s and that's what's given me this really pretty edge to my loop. It also reinforces it. And now I'm just going to go back down, tie off as I go down because I don't have too much thread left here but I have enough to finish this necklace and just do my half hitches until I have no thread left and then do a double half hitch and we're done with the necklace so here we are all finished with the first one and you can see I have this beautiful monochromatic palette if you're struggling with colors monochromatic is the easiest just pick one color multiple shades match it up now be careful when you're working with pinks this was a very reddish but this was a very purplish pink that I had here and here's another pink but now when you see it next to it it looks orange it's because pinks can go either orangey pink shrimpy pink or they can go purpley pink so you've got to be a little careful that you keep your palette towards that just like this earring once again we're a little bit purpley pink because this has a little bit more purpley in it just like these ones so just make sure you keep in that same family and you'll always have success so one color multiple shades can't get much easier than that and it's always a successful palette I just want to show you how pretty this looks when you get close up to it and see the fringe and how it gently changes to a thinner fringe 
by just filling in that little area there. So if you have some bigger beads, don't be afraid to add some smaller fringe in there. It won't hurt. So let's move on to the other pendant. Now I have our other pendant. I have some beads laid out and I've decided I have a different shade of pink that I'm going to put on this. I have a different shade of pink seed beads. This is the ones we originally used and this is the ones I'm going to use now. The reason is I don't want to do two the same. I was doing two pair, obviously a pair of earrings so they had to be the same to start with. Well I don't need to have them the same anymore so I want to switch them up a bit. I'm coming down the center of our pendant and I'm just going to start adding some beads. I have two size 11 seed beads and I'm just going to add two of these clear crystal rondelles, one of these pink ones, well let's add three of these pink ones and I like these pearls. They're nice and deep, kind of burgundy looking and I'll add three of those two of these, I don't know, I'm just making this up as I go. And that's usually how I work. Yes, I like that. One of these size 11s and grab my sixes. Now I'm going to go back through that 11 and I'm just going to repeat this all the way through. So going up and now I'm going through the seed beads and through that bead and the pendant. Now I'm going to skip this bead and go over one bead so that they're not too close together. If you did your fringe just with seed beads, you could put them right next to each other and have no problem, but these pearls and crystals are a little bit wider, so I'm just going to repeat this pattern just all the way down, and that will create a beautiful fringe. And there we already have two of our fringes, and I'm just gonna go right over and add my fifth one. I'm thinking just five would be just nice on this. I don't think I want a whole lot of fringe. Yes, just five fringes would be quite nice. I don't want to make the fringe bigger than the pendant. I don't want to overpower it. Now, have you noticed that these all look pink and they're not all pink crystals? There's white crystals and there's pink crystals, but because we're using the pink thread, it has a little bit of a darker, sh a little bit of a lighter shade and a darker shade. Just using colored thread really makes a huge difference. Now, I'm really feeling that much better. I like this, the way this balances this out. It feels much more like an elegant pendant and it's simple enough and the fact that it's just these five simple pieces kind of elongates this and gives it much more of a vintage feel. I'm really feeling it much more now than I was before. Now I just need to tie off and get a new piece of thread so let me tie this off. Once I've tied off like that I don't just leave my thread there. I go and bury it inside of the felt and I'll take it up and across. Now my glue is long dry so I'm not going to catch the wet glue but even just bringing it down and across through the felt inside will keep it from unraveling. And now I can snip it off and there is a knot there. There's not much you can do about it. So I'm up at the top and this right here is the center bead and I want to create a bale but if I create a bale and I use two lines I'll have it either on one side or the other. So the alternative I'm going to do is I'm going to take 12 of my size 11 seed beads and I'm just going to put them back through that hole. Okay, now I'm going to skip that middle one and go to the one on the other side. So we even it out. And I have 12 again, and I'm going to put this back in through this side. Okay, so it looks like I have rabbit ears. Now for some of you, you could use that as a bale. That works fine. But it's kind of too plain for me. So I'm going to go back up. You can go to either side, doesn't really matter. And go up the first bead. Now I'm going to take one of these two millimeter pearls. You could use crystals, anything, and I'm going to go across, but rather than going down, I'm going to go up one bead. Now your loops are gonna be a little fidgety when you first start to do this. You could do this with size 11s, but it's easier to show you with a different bead because with the size 11s, now I'm just going to go across the opposite way. So I came up through the second bead here. I'm going up 
through the second bead on the other side, which will push me out the top of the third. So you're basically like climbing a ladder. Just keep going up one bead as you go. And now we're just going to go across. Now, this can get a little strange looking because the loops need to go side by side like that, not out like Mickey Mouse ears. So we're coming across and we're going across to the next hole and just going up. And I'll do that back and forth and in a second you'll start to see how this comes together and it looks so pretty versus just those little loops. You can start to see where we're getting this little pearl center and that will look so much prettier than if we just had two loops going across. So I will continue this down. And there you have your bail. Look how much prettier that looks than just two plain loops. Now it gives a lot more body to the piece. I want to add another pico on this edge. I just feel like it needs a little bit more bulking up. Now I have my pico all done on one side and you can see where it just beefs it up and finishes it off a little bit nicer. And our bale, I've gone through and reinforced it and I've reinforced all of my fringe. So I'm just going to finish adding the pico to this side and as you know it's just the three beads. This time I'm using the three beads, a lighter pink, a darker pink, and a lighter pink. And I'm just going from one bead to the next creating those little peaks. So I'll finish this up and come back so we can make the necklace part. I have the pendant all finished and reinforced. I have some thread here that's just still on the spool. Just easier for me to work off the spool since we're just doing a quick straight string necklace. Now I have some lentil beads, some six millimeter crystals, and some size six seed beads, and of course my marguerite bead that I'm going to use as my clasp. Now to start out, I'm just going to take one of these sixes, I move a few of these over here, I'm going to take five of these size 11 seed beads, go through my marguerite bead, and use a gold one as a stopper. And then I'm going back down through the bead so that my gold stopper stays there. And now I'm going to add five more of these size 11 beads. Now I'll go through the size six. And I probably won't need this extra thread, but I'm going to leave it there because who knows, for some reason I may change my mind, but most of the time I don't. I just leave it there just out of habit. So I'm making an over, under, knot, twice over, twice under. So now that is permanently there as our clasp. I want to go real quick through this because, and I'm just going to use my little lentil beads with these six these are size six seed beads, size six crystals, and then the lentil bead. So you can make your lentils any size. For some reason, I only see people use them mostly as focal beads. And I don't really understand that because they're just such nice little beads that go in everything. So it's just basically going to be our crystals, our lentils, our crystals. Just back and forth real quick. Just a real easy necklace. And the nice thing is, you have all this leftover from when you create flower canes and stuff that the lentils are just perfect to work with. I'm sure that when I created these pods, I had probably created a flower and whatever was left over from the flower I made into the pods, whatever was left over from any other I made into the lentil beads. So a lot of times when you do that, you get all these other little beads that make perfect sets that go together or you can use them all separately. So it's just a matter of building your bead stash with what you have. Now I didn't count how many I have of these, but I think I have a couple more strands. So I don't think it's a big deal. I usually store these as strands. I usually store these as strands in my drawers. I just find that putting them in jars sometimes or boxes, I just don't know what to do with all the boxes. I find the strands are easier for me, but it really depends on your storage system, how you want to store your beads, whether you want to string them or leave them loose. I do both actually. 
and I will just continue this pattern until I get a long enough piece. I'm at the middle here and I'm going to add my pendant. So where I have where I ended off with my crystals and my seed beads, I'm going to then put the pendant through rather than the lentil bead. So I leave that lentil bead some room to not be too close to that. And I'll just continue all the way up the other side, the same length, the same quick pattern, so I can finish this off. But now you can see how it just fits through there. So when you put that bale on, it took a few minutes to put it and weave it through a few times, but I actually saved a lot of time because I gave a lot more detail to this whole piece just by adding that little bale that when I added this basic looking chain part of my necklace, it looks a lot more detailed. Now I have both sides done and I'm just back up at the clasp and I'm just adding my loops again to go through the clasp. And I never know if I get this right or not. Most of the time I'm getting pretty lucky. I think I've done it so many years that it, I just have a feel for it, but it took me, I don't know how many years at this point. Yep, there we go. I got it first shot. That's called stupid luck twice in a row. I think it's the 30 years of doing this that has gotten me better at it. So now that I've got this loop done, I'm going to go back all the way through my necklace. And I made this really long. I just kind of like the way it looks long with this skinny little pendant. And it's got a very uh, bohemian look. So I will go back all the way through here because you don't want to watch me do that. That's like watching paint dry. And I will go up add my other two beads around like I did on the other necklace, and then go back down again so that I have this really nice and reinforced and do my pico around. Here we are, it's all finished, and you can see I have a, a long chain on it. I really wanted this to be a longer bohemian style piece because I like the way this kind of went down, and I wanted this to be more of a skinnier, not a heavy, bulky type of a heavy beaded piece. Now here you can see the difference. This is the one we just finished. This is the first one and how going horizontal versus vertical or here is the original earrings that I was actually trying to create that just didn't work out because of the measuring. So all I needed to do was measure and I could have avoided all this, but this is the problems that we all have in beading. This is not a unique problem to me or to you or anyone else. This is something that we all make mistakes as we design and go along the way. Learning how to repair them is just as important as learning how to bead because Saving these pieces saved me a lot of time. If I had to lose these pieces, so being able to save these pieces and use them in something else is really a valuable trick and that everybody should know, don't pull it apart, don't throw it away because it didn't work out. Just keep moving on and create something else with it. So I hope I gave you some ideas and some inspiration and thanks for watching.